there are many stereotypes that Canadians have. We like our hockey, our Molson Canadian beer, our wildlife, our poutine, and our maple syrup. We appreciate things like camping and running around on frozen ponds during the winter. We complain about the weather all the time and each of the four seasons at length. And we also wear a lot of plaid and toques and are extremely polite. None of these things are inherently bad and most of the time can be kind of endearing. However, there is one thing we Canadians have a reputation for which can be a little irritating, and that is our sometimes overt need to apologize, sometimes for things that don't even really make sense. Most of the time, I just ignore this stereotype because I firmly believe that no one should apologize for things that they didn't do. But in this case, I feel the entire country owes the rest of the entertainment world a heartfelt apology. Not since Batwoman have I been this flabbergasted by the writing and direction of a show. Nothing about this makes any sense at all. I am certain that the producer and director only wanted to cash in on the attention that diversity shows like this get. Whether that was good or bad, it didn't matter. It's like everyone is trying to outdo themselves for the title of worst show or movie, and they keep finding new and depressing ways to show us the unintelligent things that they come up with. Sometimes it's really easy to shoot at the low-hanging fruit when it's just right there in front of you and begging to be talked about. But when the fruit has fallen off the tree and is rotting on the ground at your feet, sometimes it's a bit tiring. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Robin Hood. The entertainment world's weird obsession with socialism has only grown in the last few years and has sunk its claws into television and movies in some extremely bizarre ways. And somehow through that, we get Robin Hood, the story of a bisexual woman of color living in what is supposed to be the projects, of course called Sherwood, with her gang creatively entitled The Hood, where they break into abandoned buildings at night and rap about their crimes while wearing glow-in-the-dark animal masks. Ten years ago, the very idea of a show like this would have been laughed out of the pitch room, and yet in 2023, it has been greenlit, filmed, edited, and uploaded. So if I'm going to suffer, so are the rest of you. Let's get right into it. The episode opens with Robin and two members of her crew in their hood outfits filming a music video in an abandoned building where they are accosted by the police for trespassing on private property. Seems like normal things. The trio manage to escape, but are chased back to the apartment complex of Sherwood, where the police decide to exercise their intelligence by sending up drones to do... I don't know what, exactly. These apparently high-tech drones are then shot down by a handmade crossbow and a magic eight ball, of all things, and the police are recalled to the station by this scary lady right here, who is of course in charge of the men, and who is just one assessment away from being fired for workplace harassment and assault and battery in the real world. Seriously, I don't know who this woman is, but upon just listening to her, she immediately became the most despicable person in the show to me. The rest I can write off as complete whack jobs, but she seems to be the person who is the most malicious and quite possibly the most evil. She is the stereotype of everything this fourth wave age of feminism embodies, and she is absolutely awful. If she is taken out by Robin Hood and her gang by the end of the show, I will not bat an eyelash. She is just that terrible. And don't even get me started on the following morning when Robin wakes up back in her apartment and is immediately teased by her sister about who she was out late with the other night. And then this child just starts listing off random names of guys and girls who Robin has had dates with in the past, as if it's a normal thing, as if her sister is not some walking, talking billboard for sexually transmitted diseases. And then her mother, her mother, decides to enable Robin's behavior with all these partners by saying that she has refilled the condom jar if Robin wants to restock her supply. I'm sorry, does anyone actually talk like this? The writing in this show blows my mind to smithereens because no one I know has ever spoken like this, ever. What mother is actively ensuring that her daughter's rampant sex life can continue by stocking her up on condoms? And her biggest concern is that Robin doesn't catch anything. Like, am I living in the twilight zone? The bond of mothers and daughters should not revolve around I refilled the condom cookie jar for you. It speaks to the kind of woman that Robin's mother is and the kind of woman that Robin herself is by emptying the jar regularly. Oh, and then of course we find out that Robin is a 24-year-old college dropout who makes her money running as some sort of courier around the city. Because that's a job that's going to take her places. 
Of course, Robin has big plans to turn her rap career into a real thing, but it'll probably have to happen behind bars because she raps about her crimes as if they aren't incriminating and as if those aren't the sort of things that are going to get her caught. I just, I don't understand the writing of this show. I haven't been this baffled since Batwoman, and that's impressive. And then the episode continues with her mom leading some type of protest to save the apartment complex they live in from demolition by this, of course, billionaire real estate developer who is, of course, John Prince, resident rich white dude and resident baddie of the show because, of course, it could be no one else. I wonder why they didn't just decide to go super progressive and make Prince John a woman because they had no problem gender swapping Robin Hood himself But then that would send the message that women can be evil and awful people. And, well, we just can't have that in this new age of feminism that we're living in. I just think it's kind of silly not to go the whole nine yards. Robin Hood's a girl. The Sheriff of Nottingham is a girl. So why not make Prince John a girl, too? But then Robin could just as easily sleep with her because she's an empowered bisexual black woman, and the show would lose its main antagonist. It would still be stupid, but it wouldn't be completely stereotypical. As it stands, the show simply has familiar names that we all love, but doesn't really have anything to do with the concept of Robin Hood or understand really what the main story of the bow-wielding vigilante is all about. I don't really expect a person with the name Director X to be able to do that, however. The story of Robin Hood, an actual nobleman in medieval England, is a far cry from the bastardized and beat-up version that we're getting here. The earliest ballads are clear that Robin Hood was something called a yeoman, which is a noun referring to one who owns or cultivates land. There are also many accounts that claim that Robin Hood was also part of the nobility and had sworn an oath of fealty to King Richard. However, as the king was away fighting in the Crusades, he began to disagree strongly with Prince John's method of ruling and began to oppose him. One of the things that people seem to forget or just don't understand about Robin Hood was that he was a fan of good government and he was a loyalist and a patriot who advocated for the life he did so that he could also protect those who couldn't fight for themselves. This is little more than a revenge story about stealing, trespassing, fornication, and general self-debauchery. It says a lot about this director X, because apparently everyone wants a piece of the Malcolm Pie these days, does not know what he's talking about, doesn't know how to write or direct believable characters, and doesn't know anything really about how to make an entertaining show. But then how could he, when all he's really done up until this point is direct music videos that are subpar at best? I really can't believe that this show was greenlit and actually made it to the streaming service for people to watch, that it wasn't laughed out of every production room that it was pitched to, and that music was actually produced for it and released. The director has a lot of choice comments to say about people who are criticizing the show, doing nothing else but demonstrating his own narcissism and lack of self-awareness. But then, that's just par for the course for everyone in the entertainment industry these days, isn't it? It was a chore to sit through one episode of this nonsense, and I don't even know if I want to watch the rest of the show given just how stupid everyone in it is acting. Between the chip on Robin's shoulder causing her to blame the world and not take any personal responsibility, to her tendency to apparently sleep with everything in sight, to the man-bad, women-awesome dynamic that is infecting every bit of the show, to the abysmal writing, to the horrendous acting, to the hideous rap music that sounds like a thousand cats wailing away on electric guitars, Well, you have a show that is 100% irredeemable in every way. And it's equal parts exhausting and hilarious. Nothing about this show is engaging. Nothing about it is entertaining. The characters are either terrible people or written without any intelligence whatsoever. And people are beginning to wonder why the entertainment world is failing. Good God, between Batwoman, Queen Cleopatra, and now this, I don't know what to make of the collective intelligence of the television directors. It really has been a year for the strong female character, hasn't it? Here's to hopefully not many more. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. Be sure to tell me your thoughts on Robin Hood down in the comments section. Until next time, everyone.